Hi, right, Jennifer. How are you? I am fantastic, Douglas. How are you? Great. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. You are a, uh, a marketing person, formerly a, well, I guess once you're a musician, you're always a musician. <laughs> yes. But, but you were a, uh, an active working musician once upon a time, right? Yeah. Well, if you want to call it that. I, I was... God, I, I really never put myself in the level of the professionals that go out and perform on a regular basis because I actually don't like performing. I love creating, but I'm rather shy about getting on stage. But yes, I did I did uh, do my best to get my music heard with the two albums that I created and the music videos and that kind of thing. I, I gave a good go of it. So you were a studio musician primarily? Well, I was pretty much a, a person who wanted to fulfill a dream, and uh, I did find my producer and my guitarist online, and we uh, started collaborating. And so, yeah, I got to I got to see what it was like in the studio. But I was never really what I would categorize as a studio musician. But I did I did of course pay uh, to have my albums created, and I did go to a home studio to do it. Okay, so you were you were DIY essentially. I mean, you, yep. you did everything yourself. You wrote the music, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you went into a studio and bought time for them to produce it for you, right? Yes. And then you mm -hmm. paid to market your music as well. I paid a videographer to help me make music videos, and I of course uh, paid the uh, CD maker right. to. Yeah to produce the CDs and I had a garage full of CDs for a while, boy. <laughs> and I paid to have my first album cover. Actually, I paid for both of my album covers, but my, my, my soon to be husband would become uh, the one that did the art on the second album. So uh, I, get, I did pay him, but it was through dinner. <laughs> but the other graphic designer who did the, um, the oh and i also did help uh so yeah with with the production of like the the art cover art i had a person with photoshop and i had a graphic designer they kind of did their thing and made me look good but yeah it, it, i did of course invest by the time it was all done for two albums and music videos and trying to market my music across the world i did spend about $60,000 60, $60,000 okay and aside from all of the physical things, the CDs, the artwork, and that, you also paid for promotion, I would assume, right? Did somebody market it for you? Or did you do I that? I am a marketer, yourself? so I did it myself. You did it yourself. So you put yourself out on all the social media that was... Yes. So just to give a reference, this was like 2000 when? So it was 2007. And I was already, I, I've always been a salesperson marketer and I was marketing director for a construction company. So in 2007, I was overcoming the effects of a divorce. And so I started writing music for the first time. We uh, released the album in 2007. I did not have an agent. I did not have a, a record label. So I decided to do it myself. And there was social media, which was starting to really become just starting uh, to come, yeah. Just point. starting to come in. So, so 2007 was when I started. MySpace was the dominant social media channel yeah, of the era, that. and Facebook and Twitter were brand new to the mass market. Yeah. They of course existed, but it was starting to become more common to hear about Facebook and Twitter, but. MySpace was definitely the dominant platform for social media. So I knew that if I wanted to get my music heard, I needed to start doing something on social media because otherwise it was just going to be cost prohibitive for me. And I, I wasn't rolling around in money. I was actually using the part of the money from the, the sale of the house as a result of the divorce to launch this big dream of mine. Okay. And for five years, I would spend that $60,000, you know, over that period of time. And I got a whopping $1,400 back. It was awful. If you look at return on investment, it was just terrible. But what I was also doing simultaneously as I'm learning to uh, navigate marketing within the music industry and 
having a real job doing marketing for a construction company during the recession, I was learning the ropes of how to do social media marketing. And from there, I would build Rockstar Marketing, which is my very successful marketing agency. If you think about the money that you would have invested to go to school, you would have easily spent 60000 for a good school. So um, one last question about music and then we'll move on to your marketing. When you started in with the music and really gave it all the dedication and the money and the, was your dream in music the reason that you started because of a passion for music or was it simply because you thought you could make money on it? Oh, great question. Well, when I was six years old, I knew that I wanted to be a rock star, but I was living in Orange Park, Florida, which is a suburb of Jacksonville, and there was no internet. This is 1976. I'm six years old. Okay. And uh, there's, there's, you had to go to the big city. So the big city was either New York or, or Los Angeles if right. you wanted to be a rock star. And rock stars were only what you saw on television, right? <laughs> True. Back uh, so, then. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I always had this dream, but I never knew if I was really going to be able to realize it. And then here I am in uh, 2006, creating music for the first time. I'm 36. We release it. I'm 37. And uh, yeah, so about 30 years later, I'm finally realizing that dream of that little six-year-old girl. And I knew when I was going into this, that it was going to require some money. And so I knew, okay, I have two choices. I can either show off to my friends and family what I'm capable of doing. They knew I could sing, you know, but I'd never created an album before. Or I could try to take this commercial and try to earn a return on my investment. Well, I didn't really make a return on investment at the time. At least I didn't think so. But just like you said, I got myself the equivalent of a college education as to how to use social media marketing to market your product. And I have built a really great business off of that. So I'm super grateful that I had that little dream as a girl, you know, and right. then I, I finally would come to realize it 30 years later. No, the reason I brought that up is just because I've always tried to warn other musicians that if the reason that you're going into this is because you think you're going to become rich and famous and make a lot of money, go study and go work on Wall Street. If, that, <laughs> if that's really what you want to do, because the chances of that happening are so slim that exactly. But if your yeah. if your reason for doing it is because when you wake up in the morning, the only thing that gets you out of bed is that playing music, writing music, creating music, working with other musicians, if that's what gets you off, then fine. And if you become famous, so much the better. But right. the motivation has to be in the right direction. Otherwise, you just I think people are just wasting their time. So that's always my advice with with that, you know, because I've done it. I'm a musician. I've been a lifelong musician. I've, I've gone. Oh, well, we, this is Next time you can interview me and I'll, I'll spend three hours telling you my life about that. But <laughs> That'll be awesome. Yeah. That, hey, let's do it. I have my show connecting with Jennifer Phils and we should have you come on. All right. But yeah, yeah, um, it, it was, uh, well, I think everyone wants to be rich and famous. I mean, everyone wants their 15 minutes of fame or 15 seconds of fame. What is it? Whatever the term is now, it's gotten smaller, right? Since <laughs> Since there's so many people, people's able attention to get out spans there. are not as long as they used to be. I think it's ten minutes of fame now, or something. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. But it's it's uh, you know I think I think well here's the funny part. So my guitarist sat me down and was like, hey, can we can we contribute or can we can we enter this album as as a candidate for the Grammys? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'm thinking this nothing's gonna happen, but okay, sure, whatever. So he he got our album submitted into the Grammys and uh, we qualified for 10 Grammy nominations. And I was like, what? Wow. Did I just win the lottery? Did I like, how did I do that? Did I get struck by lightning? Like what happened here that I, you know, qualified for Grammy nominations? And so I, I was like, wow, am I going to be rich and famous? But it turns out that no, it was just that I, I qualified to a certain level to where, yeah, okay, now I could be in, in the in the runnings for Grammy nominated. Right. I never made it that 
car. But just the fact that I, I hit the first round, I qualified, right. and that was exciting. But but truly, I didn't even know what I did. It turns out it was the marketing that got me to that level, right? But it was just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And foolishly, I thought that when I qualified for Grammys that I was Grammy nominated. So as the marketer, I'm like, yeah, I'm Grammy nominated until <laughs> until uh, the Grammys heard about it. And then they were like a cease and desist letter from their lawyers because they're like, oh. no, 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 you're not Grammy nominated. That's the top five. And I'm like, oh, sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. But I, I, I am officially Grammy qualified, but I, I am not Grammy nominated, nor am I a Grammy winner. But hey, I'm still proud of what I did, considering I have no idea what I'm doing. And my music isn't really that great, Douglas. <laughs> I admit, I thought I was good at the time. And now I look at it and like, oh, cringe. But, you know, it's that youthful enthusiasm. And in some ways, your advice to the people is fantastic. But it's good that we don't know what we don't know. Because if we knew all the hurdles that we were going to be facing, you then never try. We may not ever try. Yeah. Well, so that's it's true. almost good to be ignorant. Um, well said. And, you know, Mark Twain once said that, uh, that youth is wasted on the young, which I agree with him on the, on the sense that, God, if we only knew what we knew now. But you're right. If, if I knew what I knew now, then, it would have probably killed the drive to do it. So yeah, it's uh, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. I am glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah. We've got about three or four minutes left and I want to move on to your marketing company is now called Rockstar Marketing. You've got a book out called The Give to Get Principle. Okay, tell us yeah. a little about the book. Well, okay, so so blending. So people are like, how did you get from this to that? Okay, so um, what I do is I figured out that if I can tell a story in a three minute long song, I can also tell a story in a blog. I can also tell the story by writing search engine optimized content for a website. And I can also tell stories through social media, right? And how I do that is I sit down and I interview all of my clients. Now, interestingly enough, we are the top content marketing agency for the auto repair industry. Yeah. And a lot of people ask me like, how did you go from like, I'm not even a wrench turner. I am not the person that does my own oil changes. I, I know how to change a tire, but I would prefer if somebody else did that for me. And they're like, how did you become like the expert in writing content for auto repair? I'm like, easy. I can tell stories. Storytelling is the best marketing. And I am the target demographic of the people that are the ideal customers for these auto repair shops. I drive a car that uh, is a Mini Cooper Countryman, which is not the cheapest. I've been a Honda driver as well, and I've been a Camaro driver, and I, I, I love my cars, but I love to take care of my cars. I'm not gonna be the one that fixes them. So I want somebody that is qualified and I can trust to fix them. So really, essentially, I'm just writing the story for the sisterhood of people who want their cars repaired because the biggest scariest thing for most people is to have their car on the side of the road dead and not running oh, yeah. and the kids are in the back or worse it's in the middle of traffic and they have to push the car off to the side that's super scary so um so yeah that's kind of how i got into it but but how I, how I create my secret sauce, if you will, of the storytelling is, is through a two hour long interview with my clients. And I sit them down, I'm like, okay, what makes you special and unique? Because auto repair shops look alike to most people. How do you tell the difference? Well, I ask them what makes them special? What are their superpowers? What is their why? Why do they get out of bed every day? What are their values? And so when they start sharing with me what they really treasure what means something to them. It really helps them stand out among their competition. Um, I, I teach a lot of marketing classes as well. And I live here in Monterey, California, and I used to volunteer at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I used to work with the penguins, and I was a scuba, oh, daughter, nice. a scuba diver in the sea otter tank. But I often ask the question, can you tell penguins apart? Like if they didn't have the little armband <laughs> on their wing telling me who they are, 
I wouldn't be able to tell the different penguins apart. They all just look like black and white, you know, South African uh, black-footed penguins to me, right? But you can tell from their little name badge on their arm um, what, what their name is and what gender they are. But for the most people, like if they're driving by auto repair shops, really all they can see is logos, right? And those logos even look the same. They're usually blue and red and black. Those are the main colors of auto repair yeah. shops, right? <laughs> so what I do is I, I really get them to tell me their stories. And when they tell me their stories, they are telling me some amazing things. Like they, they love to support their church and different uh, missionary um, programs that help benefit people in other countries to get water and to get shelter and food. That's one guy's why in his shop in Colorado. Another person that I recently interviewed, I'm actually working on her, um, her website content right now. Um, she knew that there was a shortage of technicians in the country, and she's in Missouri. So she decided to grow her own. So she's recruiting young adults from the high school and the community college, and she's actually emphasizing Hey, ladies, this is a great career in auto repair. She has female technicians. She has female service advisors. She has men too. But just to see that there really is a 50-50 split of females and males working in this shop, it's really remarkable. And, and so everyone's got their why. So anyway, I was inspired to write this book, The Give to Get Principle, which actually shares the secret sauce of what they are doing in their shops. And then uh, I also have in here, it's kind of like a workbook. So if you want to create raving fans for your own business, it doesn't matter if this is auto repair. It's just, you know, the concept of giving your passion, your love and your, your talents. You will always get back more in abundance. And so this is for anybody who works with clients, anybody, business owners, uh, salespeople, managers, um, customer support folks. And uh, it's really, it's really been doing well, and it's an Amazon bestseller. Well, that's super to hear. We do have to wrap this up. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Do you have a website that you want to give out? Yes. In fact, if I think the easiest website is jenniferfilzen.com. That's J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. Filzen is spelled F as in Fred, I-L, Z as in zebra, E-N. JenniferFilson.com. You'll be able to get a link to uh, Rockstar Marketing, which is my website agency. You can see my dance business, the West Coast Swing Dance Company. You can see my show, Connecting with Jennifer Filson. My husband and I also have a vlog, Marriage Plus Business, that shows the secrets of how we stay happy, even though we work and live and dance together. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a great way to, to get to see me and, and become a friend. And please don't be shy. And truly, Douglas, I would love to have you on my show as well. That would be an honor. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, we'll talk about that.